Welcome back to the workshop. Thanks for clicking on this video. I really appreciate you being here. If it's your first time, please hit that subscribe button because if you like this content, chances are you'll like a lot of the other stuff I do as well. I just had a package arrive just this morning and it is another shun. Another beautiful shun that has taken some edge damage. Let's have a look here. I've never actually seen how the shuns arrive from factory before. This is actually pretty nice. I like the box here. Foam. Here's our customer note in here. I'll move that aside. And here is that beautiful knife. Oh, and look at that. Look at those edge chips again. Beautiful knives though, aren't they? I really like the Shun products. They make some beautiful knives. VG10 clad. Handcrafted in Japan. This is a seven inch vegetable cleaver. We have some dark, looks like an ebony wood or something done here in the handle. Nice, nice. Pretty serious chipping, ouch. Now a few people questioned on my last Shun Repair video why I repaired that chip exclusively with, sweat, with wet stones. A couple people even left kind of nasty comments. That's stupid, why on earth would you wear out good wet stone material when you could have quickly taken care of it on the, on the belt grinder? Of course I realize that. The point is to show you that you can easily repair a chip like this. It's not out of the whetstone league. It's, it's not hours and hours of work. A good quality whetstone can carve out a chip like this pretty fast. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the repair this time on the belt grinder. But for those of you who absolutely love the whetstone work, I get it. Don't worry. We're going to the whetstones right after this. I'm just going to go ahead and remove those chips. Just the, the, the bulk of that work. Take those chips out or pretty much out with a partially worn 120 here. Nothing too aggressive. This is thin so it should cut down pretty quickly. Now just a quick note if you're repairing something like this and you have to remove a whole bunch of steel, something you want to do first, take note of that blade geometry. Notice we have a long sweep here. We don't have a flat and then a, a drawn nose or something like that. It's a nice big gentle sweep. So if you go ahead and you carve out that middle and you haven't taken notice of the shape, you might end up with a bunch more straightness in the blade or you just might want to change that geometry entirely. And we don't want to do that. Let's see if I can pull this off. I'm going to try to do something I've never done before, and that is show you my point of view. So notice I have a platen to right here. The crown of my wheel is right here. So I have this little slack portion right here, and that's where I like to do my sharpening work right there. I'm doing full length passes because if I just work right here until I take those chips out, obviously I'll change the geometry. So I might as well just take the whole blade down. Moving to a much finer 400 grit, a worn 400 grit at that now. With the variable speed drive, I can drop my RPM way down. A nice smooth rolling belt will just delicately take this the last little bit, remove that last little microchip there. You can pretty distinctly hear the, the lower RPM.
And just like that, with no hard work at all, that chip has been removed. Look at that edge. Nice established edge all the way along. A little bit thicker. Oh, that is a crisp bite there now. I could give this a little buff on my buffer and send it back and the client would probably have a great time with that edge. But with a knife like this, I'm not gonna do that, of course. We're gonna put it on the wet stones now, dial it in perfectly. Okay, let's get over. This is the Nanawa Basic Stone Holder. Just the cheap 30 some dollar one. Get my sharpening supplies from paulsfinest.com. No, I'm not paid to say that. This is a Shapton Kuramaku Blue Black. This is a ceramic stone somewhere in the uh, 320, 340 grit range. I can never remember with this stone. That was a Nanawa 600 grit dressing stone or Nagura. And it works really nicely to clean the surface of the stone. We have a beautiful, fresh surface. Now I have an idea of what angle I was just using on the belt grinder. I'm gonna lower that just slightly to help break the, uh, the edge angle into, so this is what you would normally call your primary grind. So from the thickness here on the spine down to where your micro bevel starts, or your secondary bevel, would be your primary bevel. And that's mostly flat on a knife like this, one big plane. And then down here at the end, you have secondary bevel, which is steeper. And that's usually what you sharpen on. Now, the only time you don't have that little secondary bevel at the end is when you have what's called a zero grind. This is not a zero grind knife, but it did come pretty thin at the edge before it transitioned to a secondary bevel. So I am just gonna reduce my angle slightly here and just kind of create a third plane, even convex it in a little. The, the angle, the corner, if you wanna call it, between the primary angle, the bevel, and the secondary bevel. So I've reduced my angle here. I'm laying pretty flat on the stone here. Using a fair amount of pressure. I'm just gonna go ahead and Take care of that full length strokes. Yeah, beautiful. Switch over to the other side. Same thing, reducing that angle. Fair amount of pressure. I'm just gonna carve off that corner there. And now I'll go to the angle I used on the belt grinder. Right about there. And you stick to your angle, whatever you want. This isn't a terribly long blade. I'm gonna do full length strokes. I'm just gonna hold that angle. And my goal here is to remove all the belt grinder scratches in that bevel, which really won't take long because we worked up to a pretty high grip. And this is a real effective stone. So just following that geometry. Beautiful. What a nice feeling stone in combination with that steel. Lovely. I'm going to look close at my bevel here now and I can very clearly see the distinct scratch pattern from this stone. I'm going to stick with that angle. I'm going to move to the other side now. Definitely developing a, a nice burr there as well. Look those apex kind of harshly come together, the two, the two facets from either side of that secondary bevel. So what I'm going to do here now is take a good look, make sure I've come right to an apex, make sure I've got all consistent scratch pattern from this stone on both sides, and if I do, then clean up your stone if it's dirty. My stone is real clean already. Hold that angle, and I'll do some real light passes, single cutting strokes, just like that. And this will help, in my experience, just remove that burr so you don't end up with a huge, aggressive burr there. 
And this knife will be so sharp. Won't be terribly refined and smooth. It'll be a little more of a toothy edge from this stone, but it'll be so sharp just right off of here. Nice and light. Almost, because this is a heavy knife, I'm almost lifting a little weight of the knife off of the stone. We'll stop right there. And see, one reason I know I've eliminated most of that burr, a lot of times when you have a fibrous cloth like this and you wipe an edge along like that that has a real coarse burr, it'll grab your cloth. You have a whole bunch of fibers left along your edge. And I had that a minute ago when I was just working one side at a time, but now I don't have that. Whoa, and that edge is spooky. Now, so I don't bore you with a whole bunch of talking, we're going to repeat what I just did exactly, exactly over again. I'm going to start with a clean stone, and we have a Shapton Glass Stone 1000, probably my favorite stone in my collection at this point. If I could only own one stone, be this stone right here. Here's our beautiful blade again, look at that. Now, when I said exactly, I meant it. So we're gonna start with a lower angle because we have those scratches that we created now. You can see them running out the blade face a little bit. We made with that Kuramaku stone. When we, remember when we broke the corner between the two planes? So we wanna get rid of those. So, fair amount of pressure, kinda quick and dirty here not touching this work what I'm doing right now is hardly touching the actual apex of the knife give it a little clean now I'll inspect to see if I've gone high enough up to blade up the blade here to remove those scratches we're just we're still right down on that core Oof. Spooky, like I said, but that part is good. So now we're going to go to the part where we angle up a little bit to the angle that we're going to be sharpening at, the angle that meets the stone, where the apex meets the stone. I'm going to start with a little more pressure. I'm going to go to those back and forth strokes. This is just a beautiful knife to work with. All of that blade to hold on to is just... Uh, a whetstone sharpener's dream. Blade isn't too long. Very little sweep. This is just a dream knife to sharpen. Good steel. A pretty knife. Lovely. And see, this is what's happening. Now that I've worked a bunch of time on just one side, I have that big burr there. When I wiped my wiped the blade then with the towel. You probably can't. I'm wiping it right now off frame in front of the mic. You hear that? That's that big burr grabbing my cloth. That's because we've sharpened so much time on one side. Now when we flip over, we'll start to establish or push that burr to the other side. And it's not until we switch to those single cutting only strokes that we really eliminate that burr. At least that's my methodology. I don't hide anything from you guys. I've given you guys all of my tricks over the years. <laughs> Everything that I know, everything that I do, everything that's common, I lay it all out there and you can do what you want with it. Okay, so I have a fully established scratch pattern, that 1000 scratch pattern on both sides. The whole bevel is covered in those little scratches from the 1000. That's what you want. Right to the apex, nice burr. Now I'll clean up my stone. Beautifully fresh, look at that. Let's bring our knife back in and now we're lightening up on our pressure, making sure we're pretty tight on that angle. It's not critical that every pass is perfect. We're not robots, we're humans. So there's gonna be some variation, but with enough variation, 
the average comes out to a pretty decent edge. You end up making enough little micro facets that you come out with a good edge. Lightening up pressure as I go. Look at that. Just listen to that. Mm. Now, how sharp is a cleanly done 1000? Just slick, slick, slick. Look at that. Let's go up to a 4000 Shapton glass. This is a dirty stone. Put away dirty. Work that dressing stone pretty hard there to, to scrub the top off of the Shapton. I've had very good luck, very good success with the uh, with just having the 600. That's all I've ever had, and I use that with all of my stones except for like my my super high grip professional stones. Now we're repeating the exact same process again. I'm laying it down, just refining. We're trying to get rid of those 1,000 grit scratches now on the cheeks, so I've got my angle dropped. And that will do. Here I've got some little particle grit or something on my stone. I'm not sure what that is. Give it a good wash down. Now we'll put our knife on our angle. That is, again, that final facet, the one that runs to the very apex of our edge. We'll find that. I'm starting working back and forth, one side only. This allows me, if I'm not always switching, I can lock into that angle. My wrists, my fingers, you see, are pretty much staying exactly the same, I'm just moving at my shoulders and elbows so I can be a little more consistent. I'm not using anywhere near now the pressure that I was. I'm using more than just my my final stroke pressure, but nowhere near the pressure we're using when we started at the 1000 or started on the blue black there. And I'll use this now until I remove all the 1000 grit scratches, which again happens Pretty quickly. Final cleanup. Get my Nagur on there. Even gonna turn the corners down, clean them, smooth them. I love these Nagura stones so much. They just really help you squeeze the performance out of your stone. When you start getting up a little higher grit like this, you want to make sure you get rid of the Nagura grit. Although the Nagura is made of a softer composite than your stones are. So. Oh, look at that stone surface we have to work on now. And single cutting only. And I haven't gone to my lightest pressure. I'm not going to that actually reducing the weight of the knife type pressure just yet. I'll do, I don't know, five, six, eight, ten strokes per side. Full strokes with little pressure. And I'm not counting. Honestly, I have no idea. And now I'm starting to reduce almost, I probably am lifting a little bit of weight off of the knife here now. And we are done with that. Now I use an uncompounded, finished side, polished side leather. Just a couple passes here. Of course, stropping strokes, so away from your edge. Otherwise, you'll cut your strop to pieces. 
And I just like how this gives a last little bit of Christmas to the edge. Of course, it would be foolish to deny the effects of something like a leather strap. As someone who straight razor shaves regularly and has for a lot of years now, going on 10 years now, I've shaved exclusively with a straight razor, and I know how an edge that's pulling when you're standing in front of the mirror and your edge is pulling, how you can turn around to your strap on the wall, give 20 or 25 passes, and it just transforms your edge and brings it back to a comfortable shave. I know that that's the case, so it would be silly for me or anyone else to tell me that strapping like that doesn't help. And just like that, chip free, razor sharp, looks like new, would never know that that uh, terrible fate, that bad chip happened to it. Look at that, you can see the light on the edge there now off that 4000 Shapton. That reflection, nice polished edge. Edge check. And that is it for another repair, saving this knife so it can be put back into use again. These types of things happen. Seems to be common with uh, some of these hard knives like the Shuns and some of the brittle Japanese stuff. But I'm glad that we were able to save this knife and get it back in use for the customer. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Again, if you're looking for just a whetstone chip repair, you can go check out the, the video link there. I'll put there somewhere now. But uh, just show you different ways, different methods, different techniques. Hope you can put them to good use. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.